Good evening. My name is Toby Kay. This is a short tutorial on definition, application and dependencies in V4 Gamma. This is V4 Gamma. It's a visual programming environment, free for non-commercial use. You can download it from Windows from visualprogramming.net. Also, you'll see links to the documentation there, the chat room, the forum. Everyone's very helpful in this community, so I recommend you get into the chat room and the forum if you've got any questions. This tutorial uh, will cover a few things that are in some other beginner tutorials, but maybe go a little bit deeper on these topics. So let's dive in. Let's make a definition. In this case, just of a process, if I open the node browser and type process, we get an empty process definition. I'm gonna name this super edition. If I middle click on this definition, you'll see it's empty. Uh, let's make a fantastically innovative function that's gonna be two addition nodes together. You see they're grayed out, it doesn't know what type they are because plus I think is adaptive, can adapt to a lot of different types. But if I middle click to create an IO box now, confirm the IO box type, then in this case, this will lock it to being a float addition, which is fine for this example. Uh, hold control and click to create some input and output pins. I mean, it's a fast way to create input and output pins. Uh, whoops, don't need that. Um, so there's super addition, it's defined. This is the definition of that function. If I go over here to instances and type super addition in the nose browser, there it is as a node. This time, and you'll see it looks a bit different. This is actually the running version because I'm on an application patch, which I'll explain in a minute. If I mouse over here, you can see I've got the advanced tool tip on, but if you've got one of the timing tool, tool tips on, you should be able to see these microseconds running. And if they're running, it's telling you this is taking some time to do something. And that means it's active, which is great. Let's put some values on these. So this one's going to add one, two, and three. That's very creative. That adds up to six, by the way. And this one can add six, seven, and eight. And that's 21. So if I navigate into either of these nodes, I open them, you'll see if I mouse around here, one of V4 Gamma's great features is that I get to see the live value of all these pins everywhere in the code. And if I navigate into this one, I get to see the same. So what am I actually looking at when I open these? If I open this, I'm seeing the definition. And if I open this, I'm also seeing the definition. When you look at a function, you see inside a function, right? However, the difference is when I navigate into one of these, I should get the specific instance I'm looking at in terms of the live values. This should also be true if I have a function inside a function inside a function, and therefore I'm looking at the right one and getting, can see how my code's running and debug it faster. If I go into the actual definition over here, I think I see the most recent one in terms of live values. So everything we're looking at today is really about definitions and where they are in terms of documents and how they're organized across multiple documents, which you might do to help organize a project better or to distribute a library. It also is about where the instances are, where the running application is, but in a sense, it's always definitions and it's just the gamma editor that's giving you this nice live view of a particular instance. What's in the file really is just definitions. Every VL document has a definition and application patch. We're looking at the application patch by default. If I go up to this menu, I can hit definitions to be looking at the definition patch. You'll see it looks a bit different with these horizontal lines. Also got some horizontal lines up there in the top bar. The difference between the definition and application patch is on the application patch, I can have definition and running instances of code. On the definition patch, I can only make definitions. Why split it up like this? So this approach of having definitions next to your instances is totally fine for a small application, but as soon as it gets a bit bigger, it's handy to use the definitions patch because it allows you to have a totally independent organization of your definitions from your application code. 
and it also means you can organize them into categories and things so they become convenient in the Node browser. Once you're making a library or a more complicated project, some of your VL documents will only have stuff in the definitions patch. They won't have anything in application and we'll cover why a little bit later. What is a dependency? A dependency is a feature of the document and you would already be familiar if you've done any V4 Gamma. If you go up to this menu and dependencies, VL NuGets, you can do things like if I right click on the VL Skier, where is it going? VL Skier or VL Stride, then I can get access to those 2D or 3D nodes because those are contained in those libraries. Once you've had the library as a dependency, you get access to the definitions inside it. So short answer, a dependency is something that allows a document to access the definitions in another document. Let's do a little demo. If I create a new document, let's save it and call it, um, create a new project here, which, you know, organize in the folder, my project, and the root patch of this, I'm gonna call my project underscore app. And then let's say this project's already so complicated that we want to start organizing the definitions across multiple documents. So I'm gonna create a second one here. We save this one, uh, we'll put it in the same place, X projects, uh, my project. And this one's gonna be called my project underscore maths stuff. And in my project underscore math stuff, we're looking at the application patch, but because I only want there to be definitions in this, I'm just gonna go straight to the definitions patch. In my project underscore math stuff, I'm gonna add a definition for process. This one will be super multiplication, super multi, let's just call it that. My project app. Now, if I start in the nose browser here and type super multi, I get nothing because I haven't done anything to add the dependency yet. Even though they're in the same folder, there's no automatic functionality like that. In this case, I go to files, even though this says VL NuGets, we're about to add a VL file as a dependency. The NuGets are specifically ones that are set up in your NuGet folder. We have to manually add a file when we're doing a project, but that's okay. So there it is, my project math stuff added as a dependency. And if I double click in the nose browser now, I should get, there it is, super mult. Uh, that's basically what a dependency is and how it works. Okay, part of the functionality offered on the definitions patch, so not, this is the application patch of my project math stuff, but on the definition patch of my project math stuff is that uh, some of the organization I do here of definitions will affect how they appear in the nose browser when I'm trying to put them in my app. So here in the app, let's look at it now without doing anything, super malt, is it just has this square brackets main underneath uh, to the right of it. So even though it came from a file called my project underscore math stuff, nothing in the node browser would tell me that it's anything to do with that. So the first thing I can change is the category that belongs to the definitions file itself. And in this one, I'm gonna actually give it the same name as the file, my project underscore math stuff, or I could just say math stuff. Then at the very least, when I go over here in the app, my project underscore math stuff now contains super malt, or if I just type super malt, I get, you can see it's got square brackets, my project underscore math stuff. Okay, what if we want to create child definitions? So we can do something only on the definitions patch, you get this a category, and you see it says dot category, that's how you can identify them. Dot category, and I'm gonna call it uh, division. And in the division category, I middle click to open that, I can create another definition of a process called super div, super division. If I go back to my project app and type my project, there you go, my project ma underscore math stuff, there's division category and under there is super div. And you'll see in the square brackets, it's my project underscore math stuff dot division. And you can create categories and categories and that's how you can get, as you see in the node browser, things that are child categories of child categories. There's one more organizational thing you can do in a definitions patch, and that's called a group. Don't see them used too much these days, uh, but a group basically allows you to do this visual organization and put things inside, but it doesn't change the category. If I go on the group and create a process, we'll call this one super add, back here to my project app, 
And let's look this up. My project math stuff. Yeah, super ad you'll see doesn't have any special child category, even though visually it's organized as a child of that group that we had before. Let's talk a bit more about the application patches. So when a VL document is opened and it's up here in the bar or it's running, you can like close that up there with the middle click, but it'll run still here in applications. Yeah. The application patch is running. Let's demonstrate on my project.app. Let's do a plus. Uh, let's add a float and let's give this a very high number 500,000. Let's do an integrator. An integrator just counts up forever by whatever value you put in there. So let's just give it a something. And then output here, you see that's adding up. It's adding, it started at zero, started increasing the number there and then that's added to 500,000 so you can see that's very big my project math stuff now we already know this is a library and we want to basically only use definitions but let's see what happens if i put something on the application patch i'm going to copy the exact same thing and you'll see it also runs so my project math stuff the document also has an application patch and it will also run stuff basically Oh, and let's change this number just to make it super clear so it's 200,000 or something see so that's counting up it's at 200,100. This is at 500,140. They both continue to run. Even when I'm not looking at them, you'll see the numbers go up. It's not just that I have it in the view. It's there and it's continuing to run. The problem with this is actually that it's very confusing to have a bunch of application patches running and separate applications. If those documents are only meant to kind of act as libraries inside a project context or inside an external library context, they're only meant to act as libraries for your main application files to access. The reason this functionality exists is something you should understand. This means that if I open my project app and I export my project app, then the nodes that are running here and all the other definitions that are needed to support the application that's here, that's what's exported as an app, that's what runs as an app. So this application patch is needed as the root document that starts your application. It's also used for the help patches if we look at some library here, um, we'll look at one in my little development folder. If we look at extended tutorials, that actual extended tutorials document contains no definitions, but you do need to have when you're making your own library, the name of the document is VL dot same name as your library. But then in help, you have all these help patches and the help patches simply are their own independent application. They're a small application just sitting on the application patch of those documents. You can use the definition patch of a help patch to create some extra little helper things only for that help patch, but normally you don't bother. The point of the story is the really critical thing is when you're making documents that are only intended to be libraries, don't put anything on the application patch because it won't be clear to you that it's running. When you open my project underscore app, there could be other stuff running and you wouldn't think to even look. Forward dependencies is another small feature that's worth knowing about. It basically means in this dependencies menu, you'll see forward dependencies. If that's on, then any document that references this document will be able to also access its dependencies. Easier if I show you what that means. So let's make a new document and let's call this, put it in our little my projects folder. Let's call it my project underscore math stuff. And we're going to do really crazy fraction stuff. In fact, actually I can use a dot here instead of the underscore. And this will also kind of format the same way the categories are on this. We start on the application patch. Don't want to see that. want to go to the definitions patch and you see this category up here. I'm going to do what I've been doing and give it my project underscore math stuff. And so the practice I've been doing here is giving it the same name as the file, my project underscore math stuff dot fraction stuff. And let's create a process called superfrac. Great. Now I need to set up the dependencies in my project underscore math stuff dependencies. Oh, and I'm looking at the application patch of this again, but the definition patch, here we are. Doesn't matter, but prefer to look at the definition patch because that application patch should be empty. Anyway, need to add as a dependency of my project underscore math stuff, we're going to add my project underscore math stuff dot fraction stuff. So now here inside a definition of a node, 
I should be able to access Superfrac. There it is. If I go back to my project app now, so my project app has my project math stuff as a dependency, and my project math stuff has my project math stuff dot fraction stuff as a as a dependency. You got that? In my project app, can I see Superfrac? No. Basically, this can only see one level up into the file that's literally referenced as a dependency. What I can do in my project math stuff is say, I want you to forward the dependency you have, my project math stuff dot fraction stuff to anything that references yourself, my project dot math stuff. So now in my project underscore app, I should be able to see super frac. That's what forward dependencies does. I want to finish by returning to a point I made at the start. So if we had our folder, my project, and I'm starting work on this again after pausing for a few days, I open my project underscore app dot VL. That's all I have open up here. And then I, let's actually put something here. Yeah, super div. Uh, and if I open that, you'll see at the top, super div gets opened. And this is in my project underscore math stuff. We've actually switched documents that we're looking at because we're looking at the definition of super div. However, I mean, let's give it some actual code. Uh, with some inputs, oops. And my project app and let's yeah, put some values in those inputs out here. Uh, 14, oops, 14 divided by seven. Should be two, that's great. And if I go into super div, I see the live preview like we expected. What I wanna point out is that even though we conceive, because this kind of moves which document it's in. When I go into this, it's showing me, because the definition's in that document, the document changes. I want to highlight that I'm always looking at definitions. That's what the V4 Gamma editor always opens, a definition. It gives the perception that I'm looking at code and my code is now like running in the math stuff document. But the code, yeah, the code is running. It's running on the CPU, but I always just have a view of the code that's running. And the Gamma Editor very cleverly gives this impression that it's kind of running live here in this document because we get these values we're seeing. But you should remember, don't be confused, you're always actually just navigating between definitions and the Gamma Editor is yeah putting those values on top of the definitions based basically on how you navigated through. If I had another super div that was embedded in something else, then yeah, I would get those live values uh, superimposed on top of the same definition view in the same document. Hope that makes things a little bit clearer. Hope that's been a good tutorial. That's all I've got to say, not a super long one. Uh, cleared up a few things I was confused about for a while, so hopefully that's helpful for someone. Have a lovely evening.